In my last video, we got to work on the downstairs dining room. We are actually converting this into a movie theater slash game room. And as you can see, it's a bright yellow. So I wanted to go ahead and figure out a new paint color for that area. So started getting that paint on the wall, found the fabric to reupholster my sofa in, and we were actually able to finally see the reupholstery after about three and a half weeks, which was such an exciting moment. The sofa was delivered and put in place. And this week we are designing the rest of the space. I have been spending a good majority of the morning actually working on kind of like a mood board slash design plan for the downstairs movie room. And that is because this room is quite a bit darker than spaces I traditionally design, which I'm very excited about. It's like a daring design for me, so it's really, really fun. I love that we're going with the red tone. We have the sofa in there. If you guys have not checked it out, you've got to check out part one. But I've actually been kind of creating and getting my ideas onto kind of a paper, and I'll share with you guys what I mean by that in a second. And I kind of wanted to run some of those by you guys so you can get my thought process behind how I design and create a space, like how it comes to be. And I've done one of these videos in the past, but I will say that so much has changed since that video, and it's honestly ever been since I introduced Milanote into my actual workflow and I've been using Milanote organically for probably about two and a half years. I remember watching a video, a YouTube video a long time ago and a designer was using it and I ended up getting a subscription. I have used it religiously for about two and a half years. Like I designed the entire Sonza family home on Milanote. Every single room was its own board and if you don't really know what it is, I'll jump on into it in a second here because they're actually the sponsor of today's video and I'm going to dive a little bit into my board to share with you guys first of all the design for downstairs but also how incredible of an app and website Milano is for designing and creating or organizing just your thoughts your ideas your workflow whatever it might be so let me actually share with you guys some of my ideas this is the back end of my Milano. Now, I have quite a few boards on here, and what you could basically do is you can create different boards, and basically within the boards, you can actually kind of organize quite a bit. So this one, for example, kitchen right here, this was my kitchen board that I actually created for my kitchen makeover. So I ended up putting, you know, the marble that I purchased from the stone yard in here. I also had the sink faucet I used. This is great, you know, if you wanna add items that you're shopping for in your list. That way you can just click right here. It'll take you directly to the exact tile that you kind of have linked within there. You put every single item in there. That's exactly what I actually did for the Sonza family home. So every single one of the spaces I designed in Milano first because I wanted to get kind of an idea of the colors together, the imagery together, but then also have all of the links available here. And I was able to add in, you know, I want two chairs and amber velvet. I have this board going actually for the living room makeover, which has quite a bit in there. So this is a kind of a mood board that I created for the mood that I want to go for in the living room. But but I also created one for the movie room downstairs and I kind of wanted to share with you guys the mood board that I'm going for. It's really, really going to be deep and moody. I really love this image here because it's kind of the tones that I'm channeling in this room, this image and then this one over here. I love how it's a really dark, almost like grandma chic movie theater. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, the pattern on the uh, curtains in the background and then kind of the shape of some of these stools just kind of leans a little vintage. And that's the aesthetic that I'm going for in this room. So I put this mood board together and then we have our product list of items that are already in the space. So of course we have kind of architectural elements such as the door and the beams. We also have the lighting element, which I think I'm going to be adding the alabaster pendant from the hallway. And then some of our other pieces, including the sofa you guys saw in last episode. And then this reed chair that I recently picked up that I think will look really nice in there. For color palette, we are going red toned. So I love this image here because I really would also love to incorporate a portrait on the wall. I have one in mind that I've had for a while and I'm going to see if it works in there. Um, but something about this I love. I feel like this is a hotel lobby, but I think it's still really, really pretty for the idea of a movie theater. And I also added this older one. This is a reupholstered sofa um, right when I got it. I put my fabric in here. And Milano really allows you to collect notes, images, videos, tasks, and more all in one place. And you could share it with your colleagues and your friends so that they're able to see your thoughts and ideas in your Milano boards as well. And last but not least, Milano is actually actually free with no time limit. So you could sign up using the link in the description box below to start your next creative project. And I would love to know if any of you guys have ever used Milano or you currently use it for your design projects or your workflow. 
All right, guys, so we are starting this morning just by kind of grabbing items that I already have. So a lot of these are actually oil paintings that I've been collecting for the vintage drop. I did specifically purchase this one actually the other day for this room, and I love it because this pattern has a tiny, tiny bit of blue in it, almost this like aqua tone. So I really wanted to introduce that in a piece of art somewhere, and I'm kind of thinking this one might be great. Just looking at colors at the moment and seeing what we're liking in the space. Also, if you guys remember, have this hutch which I got thrift store for $500 and I'm kind of thinking about maybe putting it right here so I want to see if that might work because it could potentially be a really cool DIY piece that we might be able to flip into like a TV console oh that's the one that's the one I remember this one I got with the easel it's so cool too it's almost like some people are trying to I don't know not let the tree fly away <laughs> I was gonna say picking apples, but there's no <laughs> No, apples. yeah. Sorry. The colors are great. Let's put it back with the other ones. Ooh, that one's coloring is perfection. Wow. It could be pretty to maybe do some sort of like taller like coffee table and then like, la like layer it over the top of this. It adds some nice texture too. She is solid. She is. No one's gonna be going into that room from here. Wait, this is like, <gasps> Ow! Okay. Yeah, we got that one on camera that time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a tiny bit more towards this way, so it's like right up at the edge of the, the, vent. Um, the vent right there. Yeah. You are about to freak out when you hear this lovely idea that we just came up with. So I was kind of looking at this, and I was thinking about putting a TV inside of here. Um, but of course, the doors don't work properly. They would have to be completely redone to where um, they open up properly, because at the moment, it's either side opens, and then there's a shelf, as you could see, or a piece of wood down the center, and we would need the TV to be in the whole entire back. So we were kind of thinking about like removing the entire inside and then redoing the doors. But then we thought of even a better idea with using a projector and actually having the projector live inside of this drawer to where we would connect up the drawer. The projector can live all the way across here, like the roll, and then we can pull it up and latch it up here. So that's kind of the idea. And then the actual projector itself would be on this back wall. I actually ended up purchasing this piece mainly because I love how it still looked like an older piece, but it has this kind of modern vibe to it. Like, I feel like this is something you might see at like CB2 or, you know, anthropology, but it's a piece that still is older. Um, and I love the tone of wood. I think it looks really nice with this wall color. And I love that it doesn't compete with the beams. They're enough different that it kind of makes sense in here. Wait, you guys, I think I have a rug for this space. I completely, completely forgot about that brown on brown checkerboard rug. And Justin just reminded me. Oh, <gasps> here she is. But the actual um, side of it that I want to use is a little bit more warmer. It looks like that. And it's like a kind of Berber material. So we brought in the checkerboard rug, which is one that I bought a while back, and I like it, but I will say that with the couch and with like the floor in here, it's leaning green. And I think that's because the rug is a little bit green toned and just because of the other colors in here. As you can see, it's just kind of leaning a, an odd color, it's not my favorite. So I kind of want a color more along the lines of this tone right here. So as you can see, this just kind of has that green tint to it. This one's just a little bit more neutral and I feel like the color tone just looks really nice. This coffee table was from upstairs living room and I think it's just a little too small. I think we can get away with a little bit of a larger coffee table as you can see here like it just feels a little small on the rug but maybe an additional foot and a half in length would just 
fill this space out a bit nicer. And then this rug right here, which is very similar to the couch, but I'm not mad at that at all. Uh, if you guys remember, this was actually in the breakfast nook, the old breakfast nook, the blue one. I thought the red or the pinkish kind of magenta with the blue looked nice. I think I'm gonna lean a little bit more towards these, kind of sticking towards a darker colorway like this. I really think that this room needs a darker rug with a lighter coffee table. Here we are at the rugs at Berber. Um, they have a ton, but I need something dark and there's not All anything brown brown Oh, brown ones are on the other side? Okay, let's look. It's such a pretty rug. Where you up when the blinds pull down? You love it when nobody's around. All right, we've been walking around for a solid hour, and I think I just found this. This intrigues me. Oh, we find the most inconvenient products. We had them literally remove this coffee table from the second shelf up here. Um, and I still can't make a decision, so I'm not too sure. Good morning, everyone. We are back in the movie room, and I will tell you guys right now that I do not think this rug is the right one. I actually did purchase this for my bedroom or for one of the bedrooms. It's an 8x10, but I thought I'd try it out in here when we realized that we had it yesterday. And I've been trying to live with it, but I really do feel like it pulls away from the sofa. Like the sofa and the upholstery job that they did on it, I love. Like I think it's just such a focal point, and I feel like the rug just kind of pulls away from it and it's competing. So I want something a little bit more simple. I ended up stopping by a rug shop that I always share with you guys the one on La Brea that I'm always in and they had a great rug and it's a brown one so I want to see how that one's going to look in the space This rug is perfect. I don't know if you can see the texture. It's actually a jute, like a knotted jute, but it has such a pretty variation in color. It kind of has a weathered look to it almost, and it is perfect for the space. It really ties all of our colors together, and our couch is now the focal point again. Like, that is what I wanted. It doesn't distract from the couch, doesn't pull away. We are in the hallway right now, and this is the light that I'm wanting to put in the theater room. Now, this light is probably one of my favorite lights in the entire home. It is a 1920s alabaster pendant, and I just wanna share with you guys how it glows, first of all. In its natural state, it's kind of like a yellow-toned alabaster, and I think it's gonna tie in the yellow that we have in the pillows, also the yellow-toned wood of the hutch. And so we're going to attempt to unwire this and swap it to that room. of this hutch currently has the inserts that were inside now it's like this really not cute plasticky raffia material and then it has this metal letting over the top of it so i already went ahead and removed it from this side and i'll share with you guys how i did that i just popped 
the back frames off and then pulled out the glass which is behind it and then in front of those are these two kind of layered pieces. I'm going to be putting this older cane rattan inside of there which I actually picked this up at the cane and basket supply this morning and I love how this actually channels the same exact color from the beams so we're going to be adding that back in. It's going to add a nice richness to the space as well because I think this color kind of paired with the color on the wall is going to look so nice together. Same color in the coffee table so kind of bringing in the orangey color. I was actually pretty nervous to uninstall this alabaster light fixture because it is pretty heavy and it also has 10 different electrical cords in the top of it, but they were separated pretty nicely and whoever installed this did a pretty good job, so it made it a little bit easier. So once that was out of the hallway, I transferred it into our movie room and I'm standing on a ladder here with a box on top. That way it holds a good majority of the weight from the pendant while I'm hooking up the actual light fixture and then we wanted to make sure that it worked prior to mounting it to the ceiling. So once that was all done, I put all the wires up inside of the box and screwed on the base plate. Wait, it's like we're in the lobby of the movie theater right now. Look. Ah! Movie theater lobby. Tan to the size of the doors and I added two inches on either side. I cut out four panels of this that way I could soak it in the bathtub. So you actually want to soak your rattan material especially older cane like this. This is actually pretty old that's why it's darker but soaking the cane actually makes it quite a bit more pliable and stronger and then also when you go ahead and use it and put it in whatever you're using it for whether it's a chair, um, a door like this one, uh, once it actually dries down it tightens itself up and shrinks itself to the size of the piece so it really creates a clean finish in the end. However, this cane wasn't really going in as expected. Top of the morning to ya! It's dark in this room right now. It is storming in Los Angeles, so we have no sunlight today. So as you can see, it's pretty dark, but it still feels really good in here, even at its like darkest. I did want to let you guys know, though, that I don't think I'm actually going to be putting the cane in the doors anymore. I looked at it all last night, and for some reason to me, it just feels like it is an additional element. Like, it looks very DIY to me. I think the furniture piece kind of doesn't fit the style of the cane, and so with that cane being a completely different color as a piece as well, and darker and older, it just doesn't feel like it fits, if that makes sense. So I actually went into my craft room, and if you guys remember this, this is raffia cloth. I used this a long time ago on that Ikea dresser flip. I was thinking of actually putting this in the doors. I'm gonna start filming the rest of this room today and like all the styling and additional elements, but I did want to let you guys know about that. So I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be doing the rattan. I think I might do this. I'm gonna pop up a photo right here too as well I took yesterday that shows the rattan on one side and then the raffia cloth on the other side. It kind of gives you an idea. I just feel like the raffia cloth looks pretty and it almost looks like it would have originally been put inside of there. Um, so let me know what you guys think going in, but I wanted Justin, he just got here right now. Justin, come over here. I wanted him to tell you guys about his chair because the freaking chair is crazy. The chair has become my entire personality, but I have lots more of my personality than just this dumb chair. <laughs> so they wrote back to me a couple days later and they said that they love the chair. They want to feature it in their June auction, which is called the important design auction. So it's like some of the most iconic designs from the last 100 years. And so they were obsessed with the chair and they said, we'd love to feature it. We think that an auction estimate, so when it sells at auction, they don't know exactly how much it's going to sell for because it depends on like the bidders and things. Wait, what was it? 30. Oh yeah, they, <laughs> <laughs> they think it's going to bring anywhere between 30 to $50,000. But the absolute least that they will accept is $28,000. I think it's going to sell for a hundred. We're, we're hoping it's going to sell for more because it's like 85. <laughs> it's like really, really rare and especially that color of leather is even more rare. Only 50 of the chair was ever made in his whole career. So it's pretty like iconic for a chair. Um, Drew wants me to give it to him and I simply said no. Oh, someone also emailed me. You need to give that chair back to the original owner because she had no idea what it was worth. And I said, I gave, I gave more details on my TikTok, but like the lady very much knew. She knew exactly it what it was worth. Yeah, she just she, wanted it out of her she house. She was just rich and wanted it out of her house. Yeah. Goes to auction in June. We can always update you if you want more updates. Stay tuned.
Well, and that is where I'm going to leave you guys today. We are actually going to start working on this room quite a bit more today. I'm getting this video up in just a couple of hours, but we are going to be adding a lot of the fun elements. So we're doing some curtains in here. We're going to be doing the inserts in the cabinet, some wall art, and another little DIY project I haven't shared with you guys yet. So make sure to stay tuned for that video. I'm not a thousand percent sure if it's going to be coming out Sunday or following Thursday because it is supposed to be storming in LA and it is dark in this room when it's storming. I'm not gonna lie like look guys pretty dark uh so i will keep you updated on my instagram so make sure to follow me over on lone fox home and i'll catch you guys in my next one bye